Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here to talk about finding distance between two points in the xy plane. We're going to explain this a lot like we did our midpoint in our midpoint video just before this in our algebra series. So here I've got two points plotted in the xy plane and if we want to find the distance between them, in other words the length of the straight line that goes from one point to the other, we're going to think about this like we did the midpoint where we think of this as the hypotenuse of a right triangle. We'll go ahead and label the sides of our right triangle like we're used to probably when we see right triangles and figure out right triangles from the beginning. A, B, and C, where C is our longest side, our distance, or what we call our hypotenuse. So if you've seen the Pythagorean theorem before, then we've probably heard the story that A squared plus B squared equals that C squared, and we're trying to find this C here. Now in an example like this we might be able to just count how far is A and how far is B and figure out C because I've put my points close together, they're also on little corners of the grid so they're nice easy round numbers to work with, but if we don't have round numbers to work with or we have very large numbers, things that are far apart, we don't want to have to rely on counting for A and B so we want some sort of a formula like we had with the midpoint that will help us no matter how complicated the numbers are to deal with. So since distance starts with D instead of C, we're going to go ahead and change our C that is the hypotenuse. We're going to go ahead and call that D. And just to show you how to use any two points that you could possibly be given to figure out this distance, we're going to go ahead and label these points. So the first one I'm going to call x1, y1, and the second point we'll go ahead and call x2, y2. These subscripts just tell you which point we're talking about. So this x2 goes with y2, this x1 goes with y1. And this A here is how much we would travel to get from x1 to x2 in the x direction. In other words, if I take the bigger x value and I subtract the smaller x value, that'll give me this distance that A is here. So this A we can actually replace by x2 minus x1. That's how long the A side will be. And this B side is traveling just in the y direction. It's vertical only in the y direction. And so if I take this bigger y value minus the smaller y value here, that will give me the length of the B side. So the B can can also be written as y2 minus y1. So now I know from Pythagorean theorem that this thing squared plus this thing squared should equal this thing squared, right? So that gives us just a new distance version of the Pythagorean theorem. This is really a squared, this is really b squared, and this is really c squared, just written a bit differently. Now you'll notice we don't want d squared as our answer. We don't want the distance squared, we just want the distance. So what would we do to get just distance here? Well we would need to square root both sides, and so really our distance is going to be the square root of this quantity x2 minus x1 squared plus the quantity y2 minus y1 squared. So this is our distance formula, and this is what we'll use to do our examples for the rest of the video. We'll keep this distance formula down here in the corner. First one, we want to find the distance between negative seven comma negative two and five comma three. So first thing here, this is our first point. So I'm gonna go ahead and label this as the x coordinate of the first point and this the y coordinate of the first point. So we have our x one, y one. This five, three is our second point. So five is the second x coordinate and three is the second y coordinate. And now we have all the stuff that we can plug into our formula here, right? So our distance is going to equal the square root of, I'm gonna start my square root and then write everything in and I'll draw my line at the end. So we have x2 minus x1, which would be five minus, and then x1 is negative seven, so we wanna be careful with that and our signs. And all of that, remember, is going to be squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared, so we have y2 is 3 minus y1, y1 is negative 2, so let's again be careful with our signs, all of that squared, and then we'll have our square root over all of that. So let's go ahead and do some simplifying inside of the parentheses. So 5 minus negative 7 would be like 5 plus 7, so that's going to give us 12, that'll be squared, plus 3 minus negative 2 would be like 3 plus 2, so that would be 5 squared, and we'll have those things squared and then under the square root. So 12 squared is going to give us 144, plus 5 squared will give us 25, and then if we add those together, that will actually give us 169 under the square root. It actually turns out that's a perfect square, the square root of 169 is actually exactly 13 units, so 
It's 13 units between negative 7 comma negative 2 and 5 comma 3. We'll do another one here that doesn't work out to just some whole number like 13. So we want to find the distance between 6, negative 4, and negative 3, negative 8. So again, this is my first point here. So this will be my x1, comma y1. This is my second point. So this will be x2, comma y2. We'll go ahead and plug into our formula. So our distance is going to be the square root of x2 minus x1 which is negative 3 minus 6, all of that squared, plus now y2 minus y1 squared, so we'll have y2 is negative 8 minus y1, which is negative 4, be careful with your sign, all of that squared, and square root over all of that. Let's go ahead and do our parentheses first. So we'll have negative 3 minus 6 would be negative 9, squared plus negative 8 minus negative 4 would be like plus 4 so negative 8 plus 4 would be negative 4 squared and the square root of all of that let's go ahead and do our squares now so in our root we'll have negative 9 squared would be positive 81 plus negative 4 squared would be positive 16 Remember, those are positive because a negative times a negative will give us a positive there. So we get that the distance here is the square root of 97. Now, 97 is not a square root that we know. It's not a perfect square. It's also not reducible. We can't pull any perfect squares out of 97. So we'll just go ahead and leave this. If you really wanted, you could type this in the calculator and figure out that that's about 9 point something, right? But this is an exact answer, so we'll go ahead and leave the square root of 97 as our distance for this one. Let's work for you one where we get an answer that's a square root that can be simplified. So we want to find the distance between 4, 6 and 14, 1. So my first point here, this is x1, y1. And my second point here makes this x2 and y2. So that means that our distance is going to be the square root of x2 minus x1 squared would be 14 minus 4 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. y2 is 1 minus 6. And we'll have the square root of all of that. So now if we do what's in the parentheses, we'll get 10 squared plus 1 minus 6, which will be negative 5 squared. And we'll go ahead and square those under the root. So we get the square root of 100 plus negative 5 squared would give us positive 25. And then if we add those together, that will actually give us the square root of 125. Now, depending on how you simplify roots, whether by perfect square method or by using a factor tree, we can actually simplify this. So if I use perfect square method and think about the square root of 125, that's going to be the square root of 25 times 5. And I know the square root of 25, so I can pull that out front. So that's going to give me a 5 on the outside and a 5 left inside. The other way to do this, remember, would be to use a factor tree. So you could say 5 times 25, and 5 is prime and 25 is not. And you'd have a 5 and a 5 there as well. And we could pull out a 5 since I have a pair of 5s there, and I'd have a 5 left on the inside. So either way, we get a reduced root of 5 square root 5 for our distance on this one. Let's work one example for you where we have fractions in our coordinates here. So we have our first point is 1 half comma 3, and our second point is 5 halves comma negative 1 half. So my x1 is going to be a half, my y1 will be 3, my x2 will be 5 halves, and my y2 will be negative 1 half. Go ahead and start our distance formula. So distance is going to be the square root of x2 minus x1. So that will be 5 halves minus 1 half, all squared, plus y2 minus y1, all squared. So that will be negative 1 half minus 3, all squared. And we'll have the square root of all that. Now if we do our parentheses here and our subtractions, we'll have 5 halves minus a half. Remember with subtract with fractions, we'll subtract the tops and keep the bottom. So we'll get 5 minus 1 on top, which would be 4. We'll get 2 on the bottom. That'll be squared. 
Now in the second one here, we don't have a common denominator like we did in the first one, so we might need to think of this as three over one. And then we'll go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by two here so we can get over two like we have there. So we'll have plus, we'll keep the negative one half, minus, and then multiplying on the top and bottom by two, we'll get a six on the top and a two on the bottom, and that will be squared. And now let's go ahead and do that second subtract here. Actually, if you notice here, 4 divided by 2 is just going to be 2, right? So that's 2 squared. Plus, now here we'll have negative 1 half minus 6 halves. We subtract on the top, so negative 1 minus 6 will be negative 7. Keep the bottom. So have negative 7 halves squared. And now we'll go ahead and square these. So we will get 2 squared, which is easy, right? That's 4 plus, now negative times a negative gives us a positive. Square the top, seven times seven, we get 49 on the top. Two times two on the bottom, we get four. So we have four plus 49 over four that we still need to complete inside of the root before we try doing anything with the root. So go ahead and think of this as four over one, like we did with this three here. We thought of this as three over one. Now what we'll really need to do then, I guess, is multiply the top and the bottom here by four, because we need a matching denominator. So multiply by four there and there. That's going to give us square root of 16 over four plus 49 over four. And then now that we have a common denominator, we can just add the tops and keep the bottom. So we will get the square root of 65 over four. And we can actually split that up, see if we know any way to simplify any of these. Think of this as the square root of 65 on the top and the square root of four on the bottom. One of these we know, right? We know the square root of four. So I think we would go ahead and simplify the bottom and say, square root 65 over just the number 2 there, right? And that would be our exact distance between these two points. We'll do one final example for you involving some square roots in our coordinates here. So my first point is 3 root 2 comma 4 root 3. So this is x1 here. This is y1. My second point is negative root 2 comma 2 root 3. So the negative root 2 is my x2. 2 root 3 is my y2 go ahead and use the formula. So our distance is going to be the square root of x2 minus x1. So we get negative root 2 is our x2 minus x1, so minus 3 root 2. All of that squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. That will give us 2 root 3 minus 4 root 3. All of that squared. We'll have our square root over all of that. Let's go ahead and do our subtract. We can actually do the subtract with these because these are like roots. We have the same number under the root. Otherwise, those are not like terms. We can't put them together. So here we'll have negative root 2 minus 3 root 2s. So think about if you had negative cat minus 3 more cats, what would you have? You'd have negative 4 cats, right? So this is just negative 4 root 2 squared plus here we have two root threes minus four root threes. If you had two cats minus four cats, you would have negative two cats. So negative two root three here squared. All right, and now we just need to square. So we just have to be careful. When we square negative four, we get a positive 16. When we square square root of two, we get the number two. Remember, that's what a square root is, right? This thing says if I square it, I get 2, right? So if I square square root of 2, that just gives me 2. Here, if I have negative 2 squared, squaring the outside part gives us 4. Squaring the square root of 3, square root 3 times square root 3, that just gives us 3, right? That's what a square root is. That thing times itself gives us the number underneath. Okay, so now we need to do some multiply and add. So here we'll get 16 times 2 gives us 32 plus 4 times 3 will give us 12, and we'll have the square root of that. We'll add those together. We'll get that our distance is going to be the square root of 44. We want to check and see, can we reduce this root? And we can. If you think of this as the square root of 4 times 11, we know the square root of 4, so we can pull that out front. The square root of 4 is 2, so we get a 2 on the outside, and we have an 11 left inside 
and that is our distance between these two points listed here. All right, everybody, hopefully some of these examples have helped you with your finding distance and practice working the distance formula. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.